targeting the epidermal growth factor receptor has played a central role in advancing non-small cell lung cancer research treatment and patient outcomes over the last several years. In this uh, segment, we'll take a look at uh, new molecular markers and clinical targets, but particularly the whole issue of molecular pathology and how that's become an integral part of thoracic oncology and particularly when to test. Do we do it at the get-go, even um, before patients develop metastatic disease? Do we reserve it for those uh, with metastatic disease? Should there be reflex testing? Should all patients, regardless of histology or smoking status, uh, be tested, or only those who are most likely to uh, harbor the uh, driver oncogene? And Mark, if you could start off. Sure. It, it's, um, it's, it's been 10 years now since three different hospitals almost in the same week, discovered that mutations in EGFR were behind the sensitivity people had. And there's just been a revolution since that time. I know while most of us were eating fruitcake uh, in uh, December, uh, a really critical paper came out in the Wingman Journal of Medicine, and that was from Francis Collins and, and Margaret Hamburg, that the FDA just approved a multiplex analyzer. And in that article, they also showed how the cost of analyzing a mutation is just plummeting. You know, people know about Moore's law for computers. Mm -hmm. The cost of analyzing for a mutation is a is logs less than Moore's law. Operationally, testing for three things pays for an entire multiplex panel. So it, it's so the cost of uh, the 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 cost the for EGFR, ALK, and KRAS pays for the cost for right. all the other yeah. markers. And the technology is there; it's available to everybody. I mean, some of these multiplex analyzers cost under $50,000. Think about it. And, and the FDA has embraced it, and it, it's there. That, that's just the way it is. Look at the NCCN guidelines. It says test everybody. It dances around testing squamous at this point uh, because there wasn't a lot of data out there. But the way things are going now that these analyzers are uh, approved, for multiplex testing, I think every tumor is going to be tested. I know many of us, and I'd be interested to hear what's happening at your institutions, testing every tumor, every primary site, solid tumor, up front on a multiplex panel is the standard of care. That, that's our It's your standard of care. Well, <laughs> well but we're not the, will we're be not, the standard But of we're care. not the only ones. It, it's not, it's an issue of, do I have agreement? It's, mm. it's when, not if. Mm. But ben, um, do you test everyone? But, but, what, what, can I ask? Mm. It's when, not if. It's going to take some time at different institutions. I suspect you're right in yeah. five to ten years. I'm not sure you're right currently. Well, I'm not right currently, but I'm okay. saying it's, it's, <laughs> when not, it's going to happen. The issue is when. Ben, yeah. everyone so, or selected patients? You know, I, I, I think this has been put forth recently in an expert consensus opinion by the College of American Pathologists. And um, I don't test pure squamous uh, histology. It's not, not, not to say that uh, there won't come a time. I think for a squamous cell, uh, if there is a small component of squamous uh, adenocarcinoma in, in the tumor um, that's been assessed, I will test, but or for squamous who happen not to have smoked, which is correct. Rare, I'm right. sorry for for squamous. You mean like in the NCCN guidelines? <laughs> so so most uh, of our testing is done reflexive. Uh, it's done by the pathologist, and I and I do test uh, routinely all non-squames who who come through. By reflexive, I mean you do not have to write an order. That's correct. We actually got together last August, mm -hmm. uh, a group, and I think this is the way it has to go with multidisciplinary approach. Uh, we got together as a group and decided as an institution that we would be reflexively testing, and by that that the pathologist, once a diagnosis of a non-squamous histology is made, uh, that that tumor is reflexively sent for EGFR, ALK, KRAS, and ROS. Now, there's uh, some uh, conflicting data on whether we should be testing routinely for KRAS, uh, but for the action mutations of EGFR and ALK and, and ROS, we are reflexively testing. And I think uh, what that does is shorten the time from obtaining uh, the tissue to having the result, because I want the answer when the patient walks through my door. I want to have that and information. Not have to order the not, test. Exactly. The I want visit. to be able, because as we all know, uh, discussion of a targeted drug versus discussion of chemotherapy is an entirely different um, uh, discussions. Two entirely different discussions. So because of that, we've instituted reflexive uh, testing. Mark, uh, test everyone or selected patients, reflex or not? We test uh, all patients. We have differing panels. You know, in the adenocarcinomas, we have a panel of eight things. We call it the I-adeno. 
Uh, typically, if we go zero for eight, which is not uncommon, uh, we, we have the ion torrent platform, which expands that. And so that's kind of uh, our approach in, in the adeno population. Uh, in the squames, we have a different panel. Uh, I tend to, we don't necessarily routinely do additional testing in all squames. Uh, I do agree with Mark as we get some validation that some of the targets might be actionable. Um, I think that's going to increase. Um, and I think we're all hopefully going to see some benefit in the squamous population. We do it reflexively. When I, so you do not have to write an order. No. It's done by the pathologist it's done by automatically. The, in the initial sign out, it always says there is adequate material for molecular testing, which will be reported in an addendum. So I, I know it's started. I don't have to ask them. It's done. Um, and if that was signed out uh, by a biopsy two weeks earlier, it might be available when I see that patient in the initial consultation, although um, uh, usually it's not. Uh, we, we, so you're we still waiting wait five to ten days. days. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, when, I, when I arrived in Pittsburgh two and a half years ago, they were testing all stages, one through four. Um, uh, I, I think we made, subsequently made a decision based on cost that we would not uh, test the st uh, stage one and two patients. Um, that, that was not my decision, it was the pathologist decision. So realizing that if those patients relapse, you're probably gonna re-biopsy anyway, and you have paraffin embedded stuff you could use for uh, testing at some later point. Realizing that they typically relapse within the first one to two years of surgery, um, you know, that, that tissue usually is available. Heather, same questions. So it's a bit more of a complicated answer. Um, it's not really reflexive. Um, our surgeons have actually started ordering for a lot of the early stage patients, which is something we discuss. But we do have trials mm -hmm. available for patients where we do find an EGFR mutation. And so it, in that setting, it's important in the to have it setting. in the adjuvant setting. Mm -hmm. um, and then for uh, the metastatic patients, if they're coming from outside. They usually have already had their tissue reviewed elsewhere. But they bring the pathology with them, and then we will get it tested. And we do a multiplex mm -hmm. analysis, um, it, which includes, of course, EGFR and, and KRAS. And, is it um, a lung-specific platform or a solid tumor-specific platform? It's a solid tumor-specific but lung-biased. <laughs> <laughs> which um, I think is then, probably the trend. Right. And then we also do ALK and ROS1. Um, we're in a transition right now to an in-house platform mm -hmm. um, that has been developed by some of our scientists, and so that'll be a bit more broad. Um, and inclusive, um, but that's our, our, our pattern. We have a lot of protocols open, as I know all of you do, for patients with the less common mutations, and given our location in Northern California, we have a heavy Asian population, heavy never smoker population, and So you see over a disproportionate a, percentage of uh, EGFR, um, ALK, and, and ALK ROS1. And ROS and other mm -hmm. actionable mutations, so over half my patients have something that I'm going to act on, and so it makes it easy to go ahead and test everybody, because the likelihood of finding is high. Um, and I don't restrict the testing to the squames, but then and of course, the patients I see with squamous are more likely to be young uh, women who have come from China than it is going to be the typical squamous patient so who's certainly been not smoking a, and is in their a, 80s. A very atypical population. Right. And, and so it, that, I, I realize it's sort of a reflection of, of the patients I see as opposed to what's in the real world outside. You, you want um, to see real lung cancer come to Pittsburgh. Thank you. <laughs> or, or Philadelphia. My patients so, uh, have real lung cancer too. They yes, just don't fit. Yeah. Downtown. They, they so. just don't fit the typical mold, but it, it you know, allows me to embrace a lot of these um, practices quite early because I have a substantial number of patients who are, are in those demographics, or and not really the demographics is the wrong word, who are in those molecular categories, mm -hmm. um, which change the treatment. But the demographics, to some extent, drive uh, the positivity rate. Right. So ours is similar to yours, but without the demographics. We actually do have an in-house platform. Uh, it's called the Center for Personalized Diagnostics. It's actually a solid tumor panel with a lung bias. It includes about 40 and growing uh, a number of mm -hmm. mutations, but it includes all the common ones, including uh, KRAS, BRAF, uh, which we've mm -hmm. uh, certainly discovered a couple of patients, and we saw recent data for dibrafenib mm -hmm. uh, uh, showing activity from France, which I'm going to ask Mark about uh, imminently. Um, we do not do reflex, although I have been militating for that uh, for the last two years. Um, it still requires an order. The order now can come from clinicians other than medical oncologists. So fortunately, at least the pulmonologist can order it, okay. and we may or may not have the results when we finally see the patient. Uh, it can come from the surgeons. It tends not to come from the interventional radiologist. We're still somewhat ref uh, selective. We are clearly migrating 
to your state uh, where pretty much everybody is going to be tested, but for now at least it's all adenocarcinoma regardless of smoking history and all never smokers regardless, or minimal remote smokers regardless of histology. Uh, but uh, I think as Mark uh, Szynski has pointed out, once we have clearly identified uh, actionable abnormalities in that heavy smoker with squamous cell, I think we'll be better able to justify it. Um, Mark, Chris, um, you're a, a critical part of the Lung Cancer Mutation Consortium, the uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. It seems to me that uh, the French have actually eclipsed us in terms of uh, their own mutation consortium. Can you comment on that? Yeah, they, they, they have, and, and, uh, and so have other, uh, the, the, the Germans too. But can I just make one quick comment before I move on to that question? One thing we've all said is the central role of the pathologist. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the realm of pathology. They are morally, by training, I think in some states legally, <laughs> in charge of tissue. And it, it has to flow through pathology. Mm -hmm. So I urge everybody, please work with your pathologist. This is also revolutionary for pathology. It, it really is. It I mean, is you go revolutionary. Back 15 years, non-small cell, small cell, and their job was done. And it was yeah, looking exactly. under the microscope, and they are so good at it. And they, their mentor yeah. was, and their mentor's mentor's was, and their mentor's 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 was. Yeah. And, they call and, those the good old days. <laughs> but, and we've asked them, I don't care what it looks like. You know, yeah. this woman, uh, I don't care you said it's squamous. Please, you know, do that ad no panel. You know? And um, we've asked a lot of them, and, and they really stepped up. I mean, we are successful because of pathology, so I just want to remind people of that. Also, there is no profile. People look for a profile. There's no profile. If you don't believe me, look to IPASS. All those women had the profile. If you got your fit nib with the profile and the mutation, you had a one percent response rate without the without mutation. It. Without the mutation, it's yeah. the mutation. It's the mutation. Now, um, I've already forgotten your French, question. French, French study. The, the French. French. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it requires a little French, bit of uh, elaboration in terms yeah. of what they've so done. So in France, about three or four years ago, there was a collaboration of industry, academia, and the French government to test every single patient with lung cancer for all the actionable mutations. And they set up 28 centers across France, and they, they did it. They test over 20,000 patients a year, 20,000. Whereas your lung cancer mutation consortium mm. tested? And that would be 1,000 <laughs> over two years. Uh, Dr. Szynski is part of that too, so I'm not going to mm. take all the heat on that one. Um, <laughs> and, and they have clinical data on 20,000 of them, 20,000 of them. So those of us that have made a living on writing papers of you know, 17 PIK3CA mutations and you know, 13 HER2 mutations, forget it. They're going to have 170 or 300 or right. 1,000. And, and the beautiful thing about it is <clears throat> they get hundreds more every month. Yeah. I think the other critical factor is no matter where you live in France, you're no more than an hour or two away by car or train from a center that has a study for specific mutations. It, 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 absolutely, and it puts the lie to this, oh, you can only do this at MD Anderson, or you can only do this at Dana-Farber. You can do it anywhere. Actually, the College of American Pathologists have shown that too. Jan Nowak, I don't know if you guys know Jan. He's just a beautiful spokesman on this. He works at a community-based hospital outside Chicago. He does the whole thing in a community hospital. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So um, people have embraced this, and I, and I urge you to just let it happen. And it's going to move at a very rapid pace. That's my prediction. I think, uh, as Mark has pointed out, the molecular revolution is here to stay. It certainly invigorated us as thoracic oncology investigators. Mm -hmm. uh, before 2000, this was barely on our radar. And uh, it's critical that uh, these uh, platforms become readily available, that the uh, uh, tissue is uh, uh, diagnosed and uh, molecularly analyzed and typed early on. Um, we can make the argument, should it be done in early stage as well? Certainly, in the study context, it's quite important. Uh, but also in the banking context uh, and uh, for comparisons later on with uh, metastatic specimens. And uh, we're going to discover additional uh, molecular abnormalities that are still not even, uh, uh, that we're not yet aware of, that hopefully will have uh, targeted therapy. So. Uh, this probably more than anything has uh, changed how we think about uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Would if we could only see some similar uh, approaches for small cell. It's, it's coming. I, just a quick word on that. You know, um, 
they, there's been some discussion at the, NI, at the NCI about recalcitrant cancers, mm -hmm. uh, and, and two of them that have been picked out were, were pancreatic cancer and, and small cell lung cancer. Right. There's a meeting this summer, and I think you're going to find over the next few months a real re-energizing of that field That'd as well. There's a lot of um, good ideas there, and, and of course there are targets there too. We've known them for a long time. It's now it's just a matter of making them happen.